Todd Pollack, an American doctor currently living in Vietnam. But he isn't just an ordinary doctor. Anh Thọ Pháp Lách là giám đốc chương trình hợp tác phát triển y tế Việt Nam. Một người nước ngoài đến trực tiếp khám bệnh và điều trị, tư vấn cho bệnh nhân HIV/AIDS. Hết lòng người bệnh nhân. Thế là mình thấy có nguồn động viên hơn. Đã đào tạo được một lớp đội ngũ bác sĩ, điều dưỡng, chăm sóc và điều trị bệnh nhân HIV/AIDS trên toàn quốc. Kiến thức rất là chuyên sâu, sẵn sàng chia sẻ tất cả những cái kinh nghiệm có cho các đồng nghiệp. Là những người đầu tiên chuyển giao cho chúng tôi về chuyên môn chẩn đoán HIV, điều trị HIV vân vân. Có những người bác sĩ như bác sĩ Tát đến với chúng. Tôi đó là một cái điều rất là quý. I want everyone who needs treatment in this country for HIV to, to be able to access it and to be able to live normal healthy lives. Hello, welcome to another show of Expert Living. My name is Lenning and I'm your host today. Now in the previous clip, you just met with our features expert of today's show, Dr. Todd Pollack, and learned a little bit about him. So if you're curious, stay with us as we are now going to discover more about Todd and what he and his team has been doing to contribute to strengthening HIV care and treatment in Vietnam. Following his postgraduate training in internal medicines and infectious diseases at Harvard Medical School, Todd Pollack soon developed an interest in the field of HIV treatment. I focused uh, my career on HIV because during my uh, medical training, effective treatment for HIV became available. Uh, however, it was available in the United States and Europe, but not really available in poorer countries. So people around the world were dying from HIV even though we had treatment that could keep them alive. So I wanted to work internationally in order to train doctors uh, to treat patients with HIV and treat patients myself in order to uh, alleviate suffering um, and help save lives. Todd then got a chance to fulfill his dream of working overseas. As of 2009, he was appointed to work for the Harvard Medical School AIDS Initiative in Vietnam, now known as the Partnership for Health Advancements in Vietnam, or HIVN. When we first got here six years ago, um, HIV treatment was um, had been um, available for a couple of years, but there was still a lot of work to be done to get patients the treatment that they needed. Um, a lot of people are still dying, a lot of people were still suffering. Um, so uh, I, could, I knew that I could make a difference. HIV treatment was not available in Vietnam in the 1990s and early 2000s. Back then, HIV was seen as a death sentence. This situation changed in 2004 when the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, was initiated in Vietnam. This program allocated funds to health organizations to begin HIV-AIDS prevention and treatment in the country. Now in Vietnam, more than half of about 250,000 people living with HIV have access to effective treatment that keeps them alive. The Partnership for Health Advancement in Vietnam, or HIVN, has been an active partner of PEPFAR since 2004. HIVN is a collaboration between Harvard Medical School and its affiliated hospitals focusing on the improvement of the HIV program and medical education in Vietnam. Todd is now the country director of HIVN, but his role is not restricted to management. The other part of my job is the technical part, so that's when I myself am out in the field uh, doing training of healthcare workers, seeing patients with healthcare workers, um, working at clinics and hospitals in the country, and helping to treat those patients and at the same time teach those doctors or nurses how to improve their medical care in the future. Like my hospital.
Hospital is the leading hospital in the North Vietnam. It also has one of the busiest HIV uh, clinical services in the entire country, with more than 1,000 patients currently being treated here. And this is also where Dr. Todd often visits to um, train young doctors and assist in uh, treating patients. And today we'll be joining him. Todd has been supporting the HIV clinic at Back My Hospital since it was opened in 2009. The work involves training and mentoring young doctors that, that work at the clinic and in the infectious disease department, and also seeing patients and helping with the care of H complicated HIV infected patients, and finally uh, also doing research on uh, new methods of uh, laboratory testing for monitoring patients on treatment. So let me let me examine him a little bit. Uh, can you ask him for me whether he's having pain right now? Anh ơi. Yeah. Anh có anh Hải có đau lưng nữa không? Không đau lưng mà nó hơi đau chỗ này. Nếu mà đau thì anh bảo nhá. No, no, no. How about here? No. Ở đây không? Ở đây, ở đây. Maybe here. For mentoring, I usually come to the clinic. They will identify some difficult cases, uh, and then I will see those patients alongside. Um, the young doctors. While seeing the patients and making recommendations for treatment, um, I will try to teach and point out the clinical findings, uh, point out the relevant laboratory findings, and uh, the most likely diagnosis and the most likely treatment. You can actually see the swelling in his back in this sort of lower thoracic region, um, which will correspond to his uh, MRI that we'll look at in a minute. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Both the patients we saw today were uh, admitted to the hospital, uh, which means they're, they're quite sick. They're at a later stage of their HIV infection. Both of them were infected with tuberculosis, most likely, and that's one of the most common infections that complicates HIV infection. The good news is that we have treatment for tuberculosis and we have treatment for HIV infection, and they're in a very good uh, hospital to be treated for these infections, and so their chances of recovery are good. But if he has neurological uh, deficits, then he could need surgery also if there's a if his spine is at risk of compression. Bác sĩ đến thăm khám với các bệnh nhân là rất nhiệt tình. Mặc dù không biết tiếng nhưng mà bác sĩ cũng cười vui rất vui vẻ với các bệnh nhân. Nên là mình thấy có nguồn động viên hơn. Mong sao nếu mà bác sĩ to mà được mà nghiên cứu ra được một cái loại thuốc mà chưa được khỏi của căn bệnh này thì em sẽ là người trung phong đầu tiên, là người thí nghiệm đầu tiên cho bác sĩ to. Nowadays, the treatment is quite simple. So you can take one pill, one time per day, with minimal side effects, and you can control HIV. Uh, we still can't cure HIV infection, um, so if you are infected, you need to take medicine for the rest of your life, but the medicine is effective. So there's no reason that someone infected with HIV cannot live uh, a normal life. To determine the best way to monitor the condition of his patients, Todd also leads various research studies here. These include a study on the benefits of the viral load test, which measures the amount of HIV virus in patients' blood, and the dry blood spot test, which allows blood samples to be easily transported from remote areas to the hospital laboratory for testing. Once completed, the result of Todd's research can be used by the Ministry of Health to improve the way people with HIV are treated and monitored across the country. Todd's dedication and enthusiasm is highly appreciated. Bác sĩ Todd là một người bác sĩ rất là tận tâm, hiểu sâu về chuyên môn, sẵn sàng chia sẻ với đồng nghiệp. Từ cái chiều cao ra thì cũng có vẻ như là khác biệt với người Việt Nam. Nhưng mà trong công tác chúng tôi không cảm thấy là có cái sự ngăn cách là giữa người nước ngoài với cả người Việt Nam. The doctors and nurses working uh, there at the HIV clinic are really wonderful, dedicated people. They inspire me and they challenge me to make sure I'm up to date, make sure I know what I'm talking about, and together we can, we can really make a difference in the lives of patients. In this country, where much of medical expertise is concentrated in big cities like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, training or mentoring healthcare workers is really resource-intensive. 
this means that it costs money and people's time to travel a long way to train or get trained. Todd Polek knows all about these costs, as many doctors he's mentored on HIV treatment come from clinics in remote areas. He's trying to overcome this problem with technology by developing a program called e-mentoring. So it tries to replace clinical mentoring, which is face-to-face -face in the clinic, working together between the expert and the uh, and the doctor and the clinic and replace that through distance uh, technology. So we're still face to face, but we're, you're in your own uh, workplace and I'm in my own workplace and I don't need to spend time or money to travel. Um, so here you can see um, uh, this is a software called Zoom. It's something like Skype, but it works better in low uh, internet settings. So even if the internet signal is not very strong, uh, you can connect many people into a meeting through video conferencing. Okay, great. Connecting doctors via the internet, that's happened before, but generally what's been before is to connect uh, maybe an expert at the national hospital to another country. But what's new about this program is it's about connecting within Vietnam. So this is really one of the first times that we're having a chance to connect doctors working in all the provinces in the country to experts uh, working at the national hospitals. HE mentoring session involves case-based learning, meaning that doctors in other provinces propose to Todd and other experts in Hanoi specific patient cases to discuss treatment. <laughs> là mình sẽ tiết kiệm rất nhiều về nguồn lực. Thứ hai là cái thời gian nó rút ngắn nó rất là nhiều. Và chương trình này cũng cho phép là được giao diện trực, uh, trực tuyến như trực tiếp. Uh, ví dụ như các ca bệnh khó rồi chia sẻ uh, thông tin trên màn hình vân vân nó rất nhiều cái lợi ích và uh, cái hiệu quả bây giờ nó sẽ cao hơn. Và nhất là trong cái mùa trần ở các cái tỉnh bạn khác nhau ấy, thì như vậy thì cái chia sẻ thông tin nhà xã hội về chuyên môn sẽ tốt hơn, hiệu quả hơn rất là nhiều. In addition to mentoring doctors, Todd also makes time for doctors to be. He believes that innovating medical education is something that Vietnam currently needs. One of the major challenges is that there are very big class sizes. So you have 400, 500 students per class, and there's really not enough faculty uh, to give uh, the attention that each student may need to learn best. So we need to think innovatively about how we can reorganize the curriculum so that we can uh, improve the interaction between the, the learner and the teacher. The other thing is that education in Vietnam for medicine is often based on the hospitals. So when the students need to practice, they go to the hospitals to learn. But in reality, most health care is delivered in the clinic setting, in the outpatient setting outside the hospitals. So students need to learn how to practice medicine in that setting. In an effort to help strengthen medical education in Vietnam, Todd and his team often travel to universities and medical schools across the country to help innovate the curriculum and discuss the faculty's development. In the University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City, we've been bringing in experts from Harvard to help them revise their entire curriculum, which is a six-year program, so it's really a big effort. The Ministry of Health and other university leaders around the country are really looking to see if it's successful, can we adapt it to change our curriculum as well. So really, this one project has the potential to impact medical education in the whole country. Some of the successes that we've had so far is that now we have uh, medical students rotating in clinics in the early years of, of their medical school and they're actually interacting with patients. That's very important so they can put into context all the science and all the medicine they learn in the classroom. Todd not only leads an amazing team at High VN, but he also leads an adorable uh, children football team where his own son is a player. This is how Todd enjoyed his life in Vietnam after his busy working schedule.
Pai is the head coach of the Gold Star Hanoi football team, one of the 50 teams yeah. competing in the Hanoi Youth Football League. Right. This is a big league that opened about six years ago for children from Vietnam and the expats community in Hanoi. We have kids from Vietnam, but we also have kids from the U.S., Israel, Germany, yeah. Chile. So it's really a chance for different cultures, different languages to come together in one team. And football is an international sport, and no matter, even if you, your culture is strange, the language is strange, the kids can bond right away and form friendships. Wang! Todd is here with the kids every weekend. They practice for one hour and a half every Saturday and play matches every Sunday. First, we have about 15 minutes for warm-ups where they Four. shoot on the goal, um, oh, very uh, good. do some running uh, to warm up. Line when we get to the... Uh... Then we run some drills, passing drills um, or shooting drills and defensive drills. Leave your ball, leave your ball, leave your ball. And then the last 20 minutes or so, we play a scrimmage where they can uh, practice using the skills from the drills in, in the real game. Watch it, son. Oh! Where? Oh. Yeah, but the rest is all it. Oh. Man, get closer. That's you. That's you. Nice. He's really good at integrating all of his kids. We have different skill levels. We have different age groups from, from six to, to eight, or to nine actually. And so he does a great job of integrating all those skill levels and keeping everyone informed. I think the kids have a really good time playing with us. The kids not only enjoy their time Take with Todd, they also feel secured having him as the coach. Get back from the win. I feel safe when oh. I have Todd as a coach and a doctor. He's a doctor, so when I someone gets injuries, he can come, he take care of us. Oh. One thing that you learn as a doctor is when to worry and when not to worry. As a parent, we always worry when our child gets sick or injured, you know, whether it's playing sports or something Watch else. Him, Benjamin. So I think the most important thing I bring to the field is be able to reassure the children or the parents of those children when an injury happens, because most of the time, uh, it's not serious. I think my dad is a good coach because he helps out with the team. He's not too strict and he can do the right thing. I feel good and happy that he doesn't just do work. He plays with me, with, with my friends and other people. After the game, Todd takes his son home where his wife Amy and his three-year-old daughter Julia are preparing lunch. Amy is a big fan of Vietnamese food. She often teaches her kids about Vietnamese cuisine when she cooks, while getting taught to land a hand in the kitchen. So we are making uh, bún nem, which is traditional Vietnamese spring roll. Okay, do you know what goes inside, nem? Broccoli? No. Peanuts? Lemon? No. But, like... Lemon. Sort of because no. like in Here's the nem, right? So, so I already wrapped them, but inside the nem there is minced pork mm. and crab meat and little noodles called vermicelli and mushrooms and egg. And we mix it all up and then what do we do, Oliver? We I do wrap it. Wrap it in a rice paper wrap. Yeah. That's right, okay. So we've already done that, but then you're going to help me. I think I'll do, the, maybe Dad will do the frying. Then you are going to help me make the sauce. He's, he's always been very good about balancing his work with time for me and the children. He's as much a parent as I am. He is putting the children down to bed and he is doing baths and he's reading books at night and he's coaching the soccer team. And so, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's wonderful. Yeah. just met with Todd Pollack, an American doctor who has contributed an important part to HIV care and treatment as well as medical education innovation in Vietnam.
Now coming up next, as always, is our timeout segment. And let's see where our reporter takes you to this time. So if you're an expat who's just arrived in Vietnam and is keen to explore the sweet art scene in the country, or simply just want to find an awesome place to hang out with your mates, then H98 may just have the perfect answer for your craving. Let's have a look, shall we? So today I have a little coffee date in the morning arranged with my friend Leslie upstairs at Gusto Coffee House, uh, which is also the first destination for today's journey, and it's 98. Let's have a little look. Cool, so good spot, man. So, yeah. Um, what do you like about it? What made you choose this place for tonight? It's has so many nice drinks, they're cheap and lots of choices. I'm sure my fans would like it here too. The the creations are are interesting. They are there's a lot of recycled material here and um, a lot of creativity. I think it looks nice. Green architecture is what makes the three cafes at X98 special. Among them, Gusto Cafe combines the creativity of an architect husband and his artist wife in the cafe's distinct interior design. Xuất phát từ mục đích là bảo vệ môi trường và hướng tới thân thiện với môi trường và thiên nhiên. Thì mình chọn những đồ tái chế rất thân thiện, nó tiết kiệm, nó làm người ta hướng đến một cái gì đấy, làm đầu óc mình phải suy nghĩ. For Vietnamese youth, these cafes are not only attractive for its charismatic space, but also a homemade menu starting from as little as 60 cents per drink. Cách làm của mình thì nó lại hơi khác một chút. Ờ, nhà mình có cà phê Ý, nhưng lại mang một cái gì đấy của Việt Nam. Ờ, có trà, là trà Thái, một cái trà rất là châu Á. Và mình ăn pha một cái cách gì đấy hơi tay tay một chút. Energized by some delicious coffee, I can now move on to the next stop, the fashion hubs of X98. As I plan to have my night out here at X98, I'm in need of a proper attire, which is not a problem because X98's huge range of options are, are really cool, chic and alternative, which are representative of the Vietnamese youth fashion scene. Let's have a go, shall we? Owned by dynamic youths themselves, the stylish designs found at X98 are made locally in Vietnam and often in tune with global streetwear. Có shop mơ xe ở dưới thì là chuyên về đồ nữ, uh, Zero thì chuyên về đồ với phong cách hơi hướng một chút dị và theo hai tông màu chủ yếu là black and white. Còn đối với NS Sutter thì bọn mình cũng theo tuyến trường phái là phong cách tối giản để cho các bạn trẻ có thể lựa chọn cho mình những bộ trang phục phù hợp với mọi lứa tuổi và các bạn có thể mặc để đi học, đi chơi hoặc là thậm chí là đi đến những buổi tiệc của vui chơi cùng với bạn bè. Targeting young fashionistas, the X98 clothing is not only trendy but also very affordable. The price range here starts from $5 per piece. And here's what I scored 30 bucks.
Days Gone, Lights On, X98 is ready to welcome partygoers to its very special nightlife treatment. What cannot be missed is the live music that drives the night. đến X98 bởi vì là với một không gian rất là ấm cúng như thế này thì những người nghệ sĩ như mình có thể được thỏa sức đam mê của mình vào trong không khí của âm nhạc tại nơi đây và X98 là một nơi khá là thu hút rất nhiều những đứng đứng mày dâu ở đây các bạn được cảm giác một cái không gian gần như một gia đình và luôn cảm thấy thoải mái. Ngoài ra khách hàng sẽ có một cảm giác nó hơi hoài niệm một chút cùng với khu của một khu mà của giới trẻ ngày xưa đều bọn mình đang gây dựng lại. Using orchestral instruments, Tuấn and his band are delivering their own take on modern pop music. This combination between the old and new is very common at X98. And that has been our expert living for today. Please feel free to contact us at expertliving at vtv.vn if you want to be featured in our show or to send us any comments and suggestions you may have. And you know what? You can always follow us online to rewatch any of the previously broadcast episodes at vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Thank you so much for your time here with us. This is Lanning and I see you later.